How's it hanging? I'm Mike, N2MAK, and that's the question we're going to try to answer today. I got six different masts and three different types of coax, RG8X, RG58, and RG316. I want to see what works best with these different masts. I got the MFJ1910, that's 33 feet, the Soda Beams Tactical 7000 HDS, the Soda Beams Tactical Mini, and Carbon 6, as well as the Gigaparts Poda 20, and a Gocher Gold Tight 7.2 meter carbon fiber fishing rod. It's time to get set up and measure the angle of the dangle. And uh, I think I got all the innuendos out of the way, so let's do the intro and get to it. All right, let's whip this out quick. I've got 25 feet of RG316, 25 feet of RG58, and then I've got 25 feet of RG8X. I've got the N9SAB 40 meter off-center fed dipole. This is the QRP version for 50 watts. And also the Coffee and Ham Radio's Mercury Link dipole for comparison. In here I also have some Night Eyes gear ties, which I'll be using as a quick and dirty way to erect the masts. It's easy to get the dimensions for a mast, like how long it is, what it weighs, and the diameter of the butt. But you don't know what it can handle until you actually put it to the test. Now let's get the antennas and the coax on the scale. Okay, first up is the N9 SAB, and that's uh, 5.29 ounces. Coffee and Ham Radio's Mercury Link Dipole, this is for 40 meters as well. That comes in at 8.22 ounces. Mind you, this is also including the uh, winder, uh, and, and it's a much bigger tour, it can handle 100 watts. Here's the RG316. This is the first cable assembly I ever made. This comes in at 4.55 ounces. Okay, uh, no surprises there. I knew the RG316 would be the, uh, the lightest of the coax. Um, but let's get the, uh, the 58 and the 8X on the scale. Ooh, a pitcher. Uh, this was the first thing that uh, came to mind. I had seen the picture in the house earlier, and I figured I can uh, zero out the scale and uh, set the coax in there to uh, weigh it. So uh, here's the 25 feet of the RG8X, and that is 16.16 ounces. And I know that I've, I've got the bongo ties and the, the caps on these, but I'm not too concerned about that. This is mostly just for a frame of reference. So lastly, this is the RG58. This was something just cheap brought off uh, Amazon, and that's 11.29 ounces. So a little bit lighter than the RG8X, which tends to be a pretty common cable, whether it's for uh, setting up at your house or in the field for uh, parks on the air. Since I've measured everything using Imperial units, let me put a uh, Bofeng on the scale so that we can convert everything into fangs. So one bowfang equals 7.37 ounces. I almost forgot this little adapter because the antennas we're using are BNC. Not worried about it adding much weight. Now this is the Coffee and Ham Radio's Dingus. Came with the uh, Poseidon kit. And it works perfectly on the MFJ masts and I'd imagine similar ones too like the DX Commander. We'll be using the N9 SAB antenna for the reference antenna for this experiment. And I'm going to start off using RG8X first. And the mast that we're using, this is the MFJ 33 foot mast. Uh, it was actually the first mast that I got when I got into uh, amateur radio. I got it secured with the Night Eyes uh, ties to the deck. And it is all the way up. As you can see, the cable doesn't come quite all the way down because it's a 25-foot cable. Uh, however, uh, it's it's hanging pretty good there. Um, no concerns whatsoever with the RG8X on the uh, MFJ mast. Now let's see how the RG316 works. All right, there we go. Again, uh, not coming quite all the way down because it's just 25 feet, but I wanted to... Oh, jeez, did you see that? 
I cannot stand RG316, by the way. No matter how many times I use the over-under method when uh, uh, rolling it up, I can never get it to uh, unwind easy, but it is stupid light, and as you can see, the mast is straight up, straight down, no problems whatsoever. This little dingus is from Soda Beams, and it's their antenna topper. Uh, I'm going to start off using the Soda Beams Tactical 7000 HDS mast first. Uh, we'll get that secured, and we'll be using the RG8X right out of the gate as well. And taking a look from this vantage point as well, as you can see coming up here, no problems whatsoever with this this mast is solid this this is a chunky boy for sure and this is absolutely straight up straight down with the rg8x um, here's a quick look inside uh, you can see how thick it is uh, compared to the uh, mfj the soda beams is on the right the girthy one and then the mfj on the left okay next up is the soda beams tactical mini this is a six meter mast as opposed to a uh, seven meter like the uh, 7000 HDS. Um, this mast is not mine. It's actually uh, my friend W2NVP's mast, but he's not gonna get it back unless I see a comment from him down below. Gotta feed the algorithm. All right, yep, just as I expected, straight up, straight down. No problems whatsoever. It's a shorter mast, but it is almost as beefy as the uh, Tactical 7000 HDS. Here's a quick look at both Soda Beams uh, side by side. The Tactical Mini on the left, the uh, 7000 HDS on the right, both pretty thick. The, uh, the Mini is not quite as thick, but it'll get the job done. Moving on to the next, we got the Gocher uh, 7.2 meter gold tight uh, fishing rod. And I'm using an S Beaner and uh, feeding it through the largest hole um, it'll drop down about two sections um, as you can imagine with these fishing rods the uh, the, the ends are, are very thin and uh, flimsy so we want to drop it down a little bit I'm gonna try the RG8X uh, first off and, and see how this goes but I wasn't a big fan immediately just seeing how much it was flexing so I'm gonna call an audible here and let's switch to the RG58 and see if there's a difference. Oh, look at that. Uh, not perfect, but <laughs> the over-under method does help. Um, so let's get the RG58 hooked up to the antenna and the antenna onto the mast. And again, this is, this is bending quite a bit. I'm not really sure how comfortable I am uh, trying it with this. Uh, certainly don't want to break anything. Um, but let's let's see, feed it up a little bit more and uh, see how it's uh, flexing. And uh, there we go. Get it up a few more sections. Now I know the coax isn't running straight up and down the mast and, and that does impact um, how things bend and lean a little bit. I'm gonna freeze right there and let me show you what I'm looking at and why I'm a little nervous here. As you can see, that's only part of the way up and it's already bending uh, quite a bit. I'm worried about that being too much strain. So I am switching it up and going to the RG316, uh, the lightest of the coax that I'm testing out today. And let's see how this works with the uh, the antenna. There you go. Not not nearly as bad as the RG58, uh, as you would expect. Uh, that's certainly reasonable, and I think that can work out just fine in the field. A little bit better view uh, from the back. Very little bend. Very nice. Okay, next up, the Gigaparts Explorer Puda 20 mast. Um, very curious to see how this does. It's relatively new to me. I've used it a few times. I love how the eyelet at the uh, top of the mast is just perfect to uh, accommodate one of the S Beaner clips. Uh, well done. Well done on that. Uh, now let's get this mast uh, set up and see how it does. All right, let's get set up here. I'm going to try the RG8X first. 
the POTA 20 is definitely a sturdier mass than you might expect for something in that small of a package. And I want to really put it to the test here and see if it might be able to uh, handle the RG8X, which is the heavier of the uh, cables. But as you can see, it already start to bend and flex here, just a couple sections out. Um, I'm really starting to question my decisions here. I, I don't know if I want to push this too much further and risk uh, breaking it, um, especially given how long I had to wait to get it, and it certainly is one of the pricier masks that I have. Um, you can take a quick look there and see. Uh, I'm going to switch things up, and we got the lighter coax on here, the RG316, and we will see how this does. I'm sure that there's not going to be any issues with the three. Oh, did you just see that? I cannot stand RG316. I have horrible luck with this stuff. Um, fortunately, no issues there uh, with the mast. And there we go. Let's take a look and uh, see how it's hanging here. There is a little bit of flex, but like I said, this mast is certainly sturdy and uh, no problems whatsoever with the antenna and the RG316 on there. What's up? Future Mike here. I finished the video the other day, or at least I thought I did. Um, I realized I never got around to using the RG58 on the lightweight masts, and maybe I just forgot to in the heat of the moment, or maybe I chickened out after the uh, POTA 20 collapsed on me. Regardless, I want to make sure that this video has a happy ending, so let's get the antenna set up, but let's do something a little bit different. Instead of just hanging the antenna from the top, I'm going to set it up like I would in the field. So I'm going to spread the legs of the off-center fed dipole, and that way the weight from the wire, which isn't going to be much, uh, but it's not going to be concentrated uh, all in the middle. So we're going to we're going to disperse that out, set it up just like we would in the field, and we'll see if that makes a difference if uh, any of these masks can stand up to the RG58. In addition to the coax, I'm going to do something different with the mast as well. I have this speaker stand from Amazon that I'm going to be using as a base. It fits uh, all three masts uh, perfectly, and you can even fit a three-quarter inch PVC in there too for uh, masts. So this is a quick look at the Gocher mast with the N9SAB antenna deployed. However, there's no coax. This is more just a control for reference so you can see what the antenna uh, fully deployed does to the mast. Now let's uh, get the antenna on there along with some coax and uh, see how the mast handle it. Uh, I like to keep the uh, cover for the, or the, the case, whatever you want to call it, the sock for the gocher mast on there when I put it in. That way the uh, side doesn't get scuffed up from the uh, metal. And let's hook up some RG58 and uh, get this up and see how it looks. All right, all set up. We got the antenna deployed and we got the cable. As you can see, this mast is certainly leaning and bending. Um, it is flexible. Fortunately, it's not that windy out. I don't know that I trust this in the field though. And you can see it's it's going almost as far east and west as it is north and south. Um, that, that bend is pretty sick on it. Um, but fortunately, I didn't break it. Uh, pretty relieved here. <laughs> I was nervous there for a minute. Uh, but it was a good test and now I know what it can handle or, or, or what it can't. All right, I spoke too soon. As I was putting away the mast, I cracked it. Um, this wasn't so much from the weight as it was from just the, the, the force. It was kind of stuck and I was twisting and I guess I twisted a little too hard. These gochers all come with replacements though, so no problem. All right, POTA 20. Let's get this uh, mast set up and, and see how it does. I'm actually really curious how this will handle the uh, the mast or the antenna deployed along with the RG58. All right, not gonna lie, I'm I'm a little nervous about this. Uh, I definitely like this mast and don't want to break anything. Um, as you can see, it's it's definitely got some bend to it. That that coax is is heavier, but it is going up much higher than the Gocher 
and it is not leaning quite as much so very very pleased with this not what i would recommend as an ideal situation but it works and fortunately no issues here uh, nothing snapping or, or breaking this time around so uh, pretty relieved and this is why you should put a sock on it or some sort of protection you can see that little nick uh, nothing too bad though now back to the previous video soda beams carbon six and I did break this mask similar to how I uh, snapped the uh, gocher. Uh, not because of the weight on it, it was just when I was trying to collapse it and uh, one of the top sections was a little bit uh, stuck, twisted a little too hard, it snapped, I glued it in, it works fine now. None of these masks, the, the especially you know the soda beams, carbon six, and the gocher have been modified. Some people like to glue sections inside uh, to try to reinforce it, but this is pretty much the factory settings for the mask. I'm just using the RG316 coax on this mask. I don't think there's any need to try the 58 or the uh, 8x. Um, it works just fine uh, with the 316 though uh, certainly some flex to it but um, but I think that this will work out just fine all right that'll do it uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it helpful uh, just like antennas I know that masks can be a compromise whether it's it's the basic things like the price the size the weight uh, to the more practical applications, such as you know, deploying it in the field, um, the types of antennas, and in this case, the types of coax that you might be able to use. When, when I first got a uh, dipole and off-center fed dipole, that's when I also got RG174 and RG316 to use, uh, so I wouldn't put as much strain on the masts. Um, it's also when <laughs> I, I, I my, the MFJ was my very first mast, but it's also when, when I, I, I purchased um, like the Soda Beams Tactical uh, 7000 HDS because I wanted something real beefy um, that I know I could use with any type of coax and any type of antenna. I've used all these masts uh, in the field uh, many times and, and I like them all for, for different reasons. That's part of the reason why I wasn't willing to uh, push on, on some of the masks, whether it's something cheap like the Gocher or something brand new like the Pota 20. I don't want to break anything. Um, like I said, they all have their purpose. And uh, I've always wanted to do a video like this. I, I really hope that you find it useful and uh, gives you some things to think about when it comes to deployment, different types of antennas, especially the dipoles, off-center feds, um, and even a doublet. Uh, and, and the coax, or the feed line that you might use. Um, if you got comments or questions, definitely leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer. And if you like this type of video, please click like, subscribe to my channel. I'm Mike, N2MAK, 73.